Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to meet you online. Today, I would like to share some of my prospects on the post-pandemic leisure travel changes in Beijing in terms of trends and the products. The sudden hit of the coronavirus has brought a lot of changes to this industry. We need to ask ourselves, what are these changes? What the future picture of this travel industry will be? And what shall we do? Even the world travel has come to a sudden halt after the outbreak of the COVID in March this year. We can see that the need for the travel is still there. Let's take a look at the chart below. From Google Trend, we can see clearly that the search interest for holiday, tour, and vacation falls to the bottom from March to the end of April. And that time was the peak of the pandemic. From May, the data started to climb up slowly and people were recovering from the beginning of the panic and were seriously considering the future plan of traveling. Although it has a large gap compared to that of 2019, we still can see more and more worldwide consumers are seriously considering and are preparing for their next travel. The USTOA has made a survey to its 147 active members in June and July this year. About 73% of them, their current bookings are for international destinations, and most of the bookings are in the year of 2021 and even 2022. The remaining 27%, these bookings for North America, including US, Canada, and Mexico. And these bookings focus on the third and the fourth quarter of this year and next year. Travel will come back anyway, but it will, it will come back in a very different way. It will bring a lot of changes, and some of the changes are irreversible. For most the clients, hygiene is the most important thing. That requires every destination to take, this requires every destination to take specific measures to dispel their misgivings. For example, like temperature screening, keeping social distancing, or the tight control of the flow of the tourists in some of the scenic spots. In the meantime, tourism-related organizations and associations have also worked out some helpful measures. The World Travel and Tourism Council, WTTC, created the Safe Travel Stamp, which will be issued to destinations and business owners who can meet the global standardized health and hygiene protocols. More sectors will apply for these stamps in the future, and this will surely give the industry and the clients more confidence in the future. We notice that group tours and join-in tours will be under a serious impact, whereas small groups and uh, customized groups, they can have a growth. The past few years saw a quick increase in small group tours and customized tours. And in the meantime, big group tours and join-in tours have been shrinking. The pandemic will dramatically boost the needs for small groups and customized groups, as clients will find it safer to travel with their family members or with their friends. It is easier for them to keep social distance and to have a private tour guide and a private driver will make them feel much comfortable. Another change is that the mid and high ending clients, particularly luxury clients, are less impacted, while economic tours are to be 
relatively more damaged. According to the statistics, Americans with lower income have been hit harder by the COVID-19 outbreak. And it is the same with the people in most other countries around the world. Under financial pressure, clients with lower income would easily tend to cut their costs on travel in order to guarantee daily necessary expense. We can see that more clients turn to online for trip inspiration, planning, and booking. Offline businesses are to be more affected. Online travel demands worldwide have been increasing for the past few years, and the lockdown made the clients rely on different online resources more than ever. For example, Fly Center has just permanently shut 428 Australian stores by the end of July, trying to save the cost. And I will not be surprised if they're going to close down more shops in the future. Travel companies with more offline shops all over the world, they are suffering more or less the same. Total demand remains strong, and it's most likely to come back from near to far, from domestic to international, and from short haul to long haul. This is another very in interesting change. The following pictures show uh, this scene in Huangshan, and they were taken during the May Day Festival. It was the first holiday after the pandemic lockdown. Hundreds of thousands of tourists swarmed into the scenic spots. At first, people were traveling in the surrounding area, but later, they started to travel to other provinces. It is the same thing with Beijing. In April, after the successful control of the pandemic, people started to travel in the vicinity of Beijing. The May Day holiday saw a peak of the business. It remains at a steady level with a slight drop in June because of a minor second wave of COVID. And later, they just started to travel widely to different destinations in China. When we take a look of what has happened in China, we can foresee that the business will probably recover in two stages. First, travel in surrounding area, and then travel to international destinations. But this will highly depend on the control of virus in both customer resource country and destinations. And international travel will take a longer time. The last change I would like to mention is that more clients tend to travel to those less crowded and nature reload. More clients tend to travel to those less crowded and nature-related destinations. According to Ctrip's data, during the Labor Day holiday, Beijing Wildlife Park, Bartling Wildlife World, Beijing Garden Expo, World Park, Summer Palace, Gubei Water Town, they are among the most popular scenic spots in Beijing. These places are outdoor with more open space and fewer people. Therefore, we can make another prediction. The clients worldwide would prefer to go to this type of places after the pandemic in the future. Coming next, we need to think in which way we can improve the product so that they can better meet the demands of different clients to make Beijing a more attractive destination in the future. There are several key words. First, special. Except for the Great Wall, Forbidden City, Summer Palace, Beijing has a lot more to explore. The key is that we need to find the best things hidden in the streets. For example, 
the Imperial Road walking tour. This three kilometer long traditional Imperial Road from Zhengyangmen to Yongdingmen best reflects the Imperial right to in Ming and Qing dynasty of 600 years old. There are not only ancient buildings, but also many cultural heritages and time-honored shops. It is a perfect combination of the past and the present, one of the best ways to know Beijing in depth. Second, immersive. Beijing is not a place only to be seen, but it's also a place to be felt. Normally, the clients just have a chance to see baking opera on the stage. But now, they can do a facial makeup, dress up with the fancy costumes, and even learn how to deliver a show on the stage under the tutorship of a baking opera master. There are a lot more to offer, such as to learn printing and bookmaking, to learn the making of Chinese dumplings, or the puppet show. Third, natural. According to TripAdvisor's analysis, nearly 60% of consumers would prefer to go somewhere off the beaten path instead of popular destinations with crowds of tourists. As a big city, Beijing is not in a very advantageous position. But Beijing is a must for most of the tourists visiting China. The clients cannot skip Beijing. On the other hand, most travelers traveling in China would go to different places. So a better choice is to combine Beijing with those scenic but sparsely populated destinations, such as Guilin, Zhang Jiajie, or Yunnan province, and etc. Fourth, practical. When designing a right product, we also need to consider whether a product is workable or not when it is being implemented. For instance, cycling in Beijing is a good idea, but you cannot let the clients cycle in the busy streets or narrow hutongs. Safety is always on top of any product's creativity. Last but not least important, cost-effective. Special, immersive, and easy-to-operate travel products are essential. However, they shall also remain price-friendly. If you take a view of the sunrise on the Great Wall, or stroll along the streets in the evening with your guides and the drivers serving you until late into the night. These romantic products are usually more expensive. For the clients who are seeking for most economic use of their money, some other ways shall be found to make the price lower without a compromise on the quality of this product. There is no other city in China that can best reflect this country. In Beijing, you will not only find wonders of the world, but also friendly people, spectacular scenery, delicious food, and etc. Even though most of the tourists worldwide cannot visit Beijing at the moment, we need to understand that Travel is not dead. It is sleeping. It will come back someday in the future. Beijing is always there waiting for you to discover. It is a place that can give you a memory of a lifetime. Thank you.